Hello and welcome to the Pencil Kings tutorial. This is um, how to draw figures and characters, or well, how to sketch them. And your host here is is me. My name is Ahmed Al Duri. You can call me Med. My friends call me Med. You know, even my sister calls me Med. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. Uh, what we're seeing here is is uh, I'm just drawing these shapes now. It might be self-explanatory to some, but I'll explain it. So the blue part represents the upper rib cage area, and the green is the limbs and the head, and the red part is the waist. That is like kind of the pelvis. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I'm drawing out a reference for myself. Now, I don't always do this. Actually, I don't ever do this, but I'm doing it to explain uh, the parts because I'm going to use that for the next thing. So what I'll do is kind of select that blue because I'm like, I want to draw that. In perspective and what I'll do is just draw a rectangle um, in perspective and beneath it I will do a red one representing the pelvis so the the point of this is um, to be able to come up with a lot of different poses and to make them dynamic because if you have just a forward head-on regular good old uh, pose it's kind of kind of boring so what we're seeing here is called foreshortening and I think this is a very useful exercise um, to kind of practice basic and anatomy not anatomy but like posing um, and it comes in handy when you want to come up with a really cool illustration um, yeah so you know it, it's a very simplified way to do this because if we try and get caught up in the details of like what a hand it really is and like oh, I want to draw the head as it is right away then you kind of miss out on the foundation and the foundation is the most necessary part um, now this part is a head-on just a 2d thing but it's I'm doing it to illustrate uh, something called gesture now I'll talk about more uh, gesture in the next lesson but I'll touch on it here a bit um, now the the head and the pelvis the head and the waist are both in the same direction, and the the rib the rib cage slash uh, chest area is kind of tilted in the opposite direction against them. Now this creates a really, to me, interesting dynamic. Uh, you see fashion models do this. You see it in in photo shoots, and it's just I think more dynamic and off balance in a good way. Um, to uh, to sketch your characters. Ah, uh, okay. Let me just lay it out that I've I've never done this before. You know, well I have done tutorials and talked over them, but this feels different. I don't know. Here we go. So where did how did I come up with this? Well, I didn't really invent this whole idea of foreshortening. I am very influenced, at least when I was younger, by a lot of comic book. Art, like, you know the covers the the characters more specifically spider-man like the one drawn by J Scott Campbell he was just so good at like making really awesome dynamic poses and I was like how did he do that and so what you're seeing here is a very simplified way of laying out the parts of a body that you can use as an underlay to draw over later um, it's a very uh, uh, like I said a, a useful practice and what I like to do is not you know just draw one and roll with it I'll draw like you're gonna see a bunch of layers on the right uh, a whole bunch of different versions and that way you allow yourself to explore um, different possibilities you know this is called ideation you you provide iterations of, of what could be now uh, the reason that works is because well if you just settle on the first or the third drawing then you're kind of missing out on what could be like your 20th drawing because that's probably going to be way cooler because the first you know 10 or 12 at first they're going to be like very similar and you you look at them and you you wonder well why are they so similar they're kind of boring and then you're like well what if i try to change it up and then you you change the direction of things you organize things in a different way it, it's a basic exercise and it forces you to kind of um think outside of the box on what you could do with these poses.
um, right here we see a kind of dynamic pose and you know it's called foreshortening when there's something um, kind of coming at you and like I think the part that's kind of closest to us in that one was the shoulder but I guess I moved on to the next one um, I'm not drawing this as I speak this is already a pre-recorded drawing uh, session uh, because I can't really draw and talk at the same time you know it's probably easier for me if I do it this way so um, let me try and remember what I was doing here so yeah I'm thinking about like well what if we were kind of lower than the character and we're looking up at him or her or whatever uh, but we're also behind him and he's facing away and he's reaching around to grab a sword from his hilt or something um, or maybe it's a you know a broom I don't know something cool a broom is not cool a sword is cooler I don't know why I said that um, yeah and then you you know you could use this as an underlay for, for your drawing I'm I'm repeating myself, aren't I? That's okay. I know you'll forgive me. So, yeah, I, I'm not getting caught up in the details of of the hands or, or like where the muscles are supposed to be. That all comes later. Um, and I'm at a point where I could draw those things without laying down a foundation, but um, I think it's important to be able to do these foundational block-ins, if you will, um, before going on to the more complex things. Because if you let this guide your your actual drawings later, they have dynamic, a very good dynamic to them. Because um, a lot of people will complain about their drawings and ask me, you know, hey man, like, my drawings are so stiff, like, why? I'm like, well, try this. And they're like, oh, cool. And then, you know, fun stuff. So what, what you're seeing here is also another interesting thing. Another interesting thing. The... Uh, the chest area is in one direction and the pelvis is twisted um, towards the right or to his left um, and you can like turn it either way but what this does it creates a cool flow uh, I think it's a cool flow because then like your brain naturally figures out that the legs are going to go in a certain direction and you um, kind of you have a bunch of options of what you can do with the legs and you kind of pick one um, it's, it's a really fun thing to mess around with um, and in this one this little sketch I'm drawing that upper rectangular tor not torso um, is it the torso well it's the chest area um, but I'm drawing it instead of it being a perfect rectangle I'm bending it forward like it's flexible now what I'm implying here is that uh, the guy is kind of like leaning forward and his arms are moving forward or like kind of reaching forward I, I don't draw it that way but it's a start and you can bend that part backwards or forwards because if he's reaching behind himself then I would have drawn it bending backwards like um, folding the other way um, and what that does is it creates a of course interesting dynamic uh, and, it, and it avoids that stiffness that so many people fall into doing um, another thing is like I'll like I'm drawing these simple diamonds and triangles for um, the the feet and the hands because I don't have time to draw the hands right now. I'm just kind of coming up with poses, um, and like I like I said, I like to do a whole bunch of versions and if I uh, different versions of the of the character and if I get caught up in details right now at this stage, then you know, I won't have the opportunity to explore different ways of drawing it. Um, what else can I talk about? See, I've, I've uh, kind of thought about what I want to talk about, and I've said a lot of the things that I wanted to say, and then it's like, what's left? I don't know. Um, well, I'm, I'm hungry. I might get some food later. Is that too irrele irrelevant? I don't know. Whatever. Um... Yeah, so I, I hope you're enjoying this, and I don't, I don't know if this is too complex or too simple, but it's something for you to reference. Now, don't be discouraged if you know you can't like knock out these cool poses like right away. Like this is something I've been doing for a long time, um, and it will take practice because you know practice makes perfect, yada yada. But I still practice, and I still try and learn new things, um, and it's the mileage that will uh, get you very far. And I, I, I really believe that you'll, you'll get better just by just doing a lot of drawings. Um, 
Anyway, let's let's move on to the next part, the next lesson. Here we go. Here we go.